Hey guys, today I will teach you how to edit drone footage on LumiFusion, my workflow, show you how to edit, color grade, speed adjustments, and then finally export in 4K. Let's get into it. So my go-to editor of choice is Final Cut Pro, but if I'm going to be editing on my iPad or on the go, LumaFusion is currently the best you're going to be able to get. It's a paid app. This is not sponsored in any way, but it's the best and I've tested so many. It's available on iOS and Android, and today I'm going to teach you how to use this. So it's going to be a bit of a long one, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the video, or pause it, go and get an iPad, get some footage ready, and then follow along with me. But first, before we start editing, we just need to quickly touch on workflow and how you can actually get started to edit that footage. So what I do is I take the memory card direct out of the drone. I don't transfer it. I don't use DJI Fly. I get that memory card out and then I get that memory card and put it into a card reader. And then with that card reader, what I then need to do is get that footage onto my iPad or my laptop. So the problem here is on all the latest iPads and laptops, you only have one or two ports. You don't have any card reader ports. So this is where you need to now embrace that dongle life. The two dongles that I use daily are this first one here by Cable Creations. This is going to give you an extra USB-C port, your HDMI, two USB ports, and then a headphone jack. So I can connect this direct to my iPad. Also, this one here gives me a SD card, a mini SD card, USB-C ports, HDMI ports. So these are fantastic. I will link both of these as well. But if you're going to be editing on the go, you need to have a dongle and it needs to be a good one. And then finally, my SSD drive. It's got to be a T5 Samsung, the best one I've tested, and it's brilliant. Unfortunately, this is just how it is. We need to adopt this dongle life for the time being. But right now, I've got my SSD connected straight up by that cable creation dongle to my iPad and all the footage is on there ready to go. So when on LumaFusion, I want to create a new project. I want the frame rate to be 24. I filmed at 4K 24 FPS. I want to match that. I'm going to keep the frame aspect radio based on the first video clip we add and then we'll keep the color space the same as well. I'll talk about that towards the end of the video. Once I've actually done that, you can see here, this is how I've got my hard drive connected and then these are all the files in this folder I've created. If you haven't created one, you can click on files, just select your actual hard drive and then you can have a creator folder or you can select that folder that's already on your hard drive so I've got one called golden mile I can just go into my hard drive look for that click on it and then you would click done for my case because I've already selected it I'm just going to click cancel and then now you've got access to all those files or clips which are on that so these are all the files which are on the memory card I've now transferred them to this SSD just so I know everything's there and safe and I can start editing so I'll just zoom in a little bit here so you can see clearly. So these are my clips. So my first clip here, I want this to be my first clip. So I'll just show you how to get started. If you do know this, then just follow along because you might pick something up. So I want this, I'm going to be flying under the pier. So we've got in and out points. So it's basically where that clip starts. So I want the clip to start here. So I'm going to click on this button and that's now going to be set my in point. And then the out point is where you want the clip to end. So when it reaches the end of the pier, I want my out point to end there so I'm going to click that button which is the out point once I've done that they're going to transfer it to my timeline and that's my first clip it's on there and you can see it's really fast and smooth the way everything just goes and it works straight away there's no buffering there's no lag nothing it's so good and responsive this app and this is 4k footage so my next clip now I want to find a clip which is in a similar area so I'm going to go through those shots I'm going to do the same again get an in point and out point and then once I've done that I can then export that to my timeline just as a did before so once that's on my timeline I've got two clips but once they're on the timeline now I've decided I want to actually change them and move them about so to do that you simply just click on one of the clips and then you can just click and hold and then you'll drag it to wherever you wish so I want this second clip to be my first clip so I'm just going to drag it over and that's now my first clip. So I want it to transition. So I'm going to click this button at the bottom here and this allows you to add a transition. So I'm going to click on that now, click transition, and then that first clip will now transition and then to the second one. So it's like a nice fade to black there. So that's perfect. Okay, next clip. So this clip now is a long clip and the scissor icon at the bottom of the timeline buttons will allow you to 
cut that clip apart. So if there's any jagged motions or you want to just cut stuff out, this is where you would use that cutting motion and this is how you cut parts of that clip. So I'm just gonna fast forward now. I'm just gonna find the area that I want and the areas I don't want. And then just by using that cut button like this now, I can just select and delete the parts I don't wish to have. I use this all the time, you know, cut out all the stuff you don't want to see, any movements that are not correct, you know, or actually in this situation now, I want the first clip to be there. And then I'm gonna just fast forward past the timeline now to just to the side of that wheel. And then I'm gonna use that cut motion and then I'm gonna cut out everything in between that. So if we just look at that again now, so we've gone through the pier, we've got a distance shot of the actual wheel. And then as we're approaching it, it cuts to just that wheel. So it cuts out all the stuff in between makes it a bit more entertaining for the viewer to see. So again, same in point here by selecting that button. I want this clip to start round about here. So I'm going to click the in point and then where I want it to end, I'm going to do just where that here becomes out of the shot and then click my out point. And then same again, I'm just going to drag that onto my timeline. But what about if you've got one really long clip and you want to have multiple in and out points and it saves having to cut out stuff when it's on your timeline. So I've selected an in point there. I'm just going to be going sideways here. And then once I've actually found my out points, as you remember before, we just click that out point button. So around about here, I'm going to select my out point and drag that onto the timeline. I can then continue with this same clip and then select a new in point. So here, the black little tower is on the right hand side of me. So I want it to start there. So in point there. So this is now using that same clip, but it's started a whole fresh new in point selection. And then as we're actually going forward, we're just getting that tower out of frame there on the right hand side. So I'm going to select this now as my out point, export that over and I've now got two clips on my timeline from just that one shot. So it's a really quick way of doing it. This shot now, I want to actually slow down the second half of the clip. So I'm panning up now on the pier. I'm going to cut this bit now using that cut tool. And then the second half of the clip, I'm going to slow down by clicking on that pencil icon highlighted. This allows you then to actually frame the shot, speed in reverse or color grade. So we're going to click speed in reverse. I'm then going to actually decrease that speed a little bit on the clip. You can actually increase it as well if you wish. But because it's a 24 FPS timeline, we don't have a lot of room to play at all and it could start stuttering so this is what it looks like slow down a little bit as you can see it slows that motion down a bit and then it transitions then into that next shot Okay, so we're doing well. So we've come to the end of the clip now, and then I want it to actually fade out. So as we did at the start of the video, we actually get to the end of the timeline, click the plus icon in the timeline buttons, click transition, and that will now fade out to black and you get a really nice smooth look to it. So that's our actual timeline here. But what we want to do is we want this to fade out more. So click on that transition button and drag that out more. So you can see now you've got a lot more of a smooth fade. It's not really abrupt, it fades out nice and slowly looks really professional you can also do this on any ipad it doesn't need to be an ipad pro or any device where you can get lumifusion so let's look at color now so we're going to actually select a clip and then we're going to click that pencil icon again this time we're going to select the color which is on the bottom right hand corner now for color grading, you get to see different color presets. There's lots, or you can actually just adjust the colors yourself. So on color presets here, you can go through all the different presets and you can select one you wish. You can adjust that as well. Now there isn't loads of different sliders on here or color wheels like I use a lot, but it's a lot better than a lot of other video editors out there as well. And you can get some really good results. So on LUTs are really good as well. You get all the filmic LUTs and then you can go through here and then you can actually increase them or decrease them. and add your own. For this one here, I'm just going to select the original content and then I'm going to actually press that bottom button there to the left hand side and that will allow me then to grade this myself. So from here you can change things like brightness, contrast, saturation, you can increase the vibrance if you wish. You can go through all these different sliders here and then you just basically adjusting it to your own preference. There is going to be an update coming soon as well where they're going to be adding color wheels which is going to be fantastic and it will just show you 
if you're overexposed or underexposed. It's going to give you a lot more professional touches to this, as well as some other updates as well coming. So for me, editing on an iPad, I'm looking forward to this update. But for this example, let's just keep that color like that. So that's the before and the after. So this clip now, by clicking on this button here, this allows you to copy that, what you've just done. So that clip there, I'm going to actually go onto this and this brings up a clipboard. So here you can do cop things like copy and paste. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the actual colors which we've just done there. So by clicking these buttons here just above, by clicking these, this will allow you to actually copy the frame aspect, it allows you to copy the any speed adjustments or any colors. So I'm going to highlight all the ones I wish to actually copy, and that's now copied, ready to be pasted. So here we need to click on the icon at the bottom left hand corner, it's like a square with a tick inside of it. This will now allow you to highlight multiple clips. So I'm going to go along through the whole timeline. I'm going to select all those clips. And then basically that one color preset, which we did on that one clip, I'm going to paste that onto all of the clips on that timeline. So that one adjustment we did on one clip has now been pasted on all of them. For a fast edit, this is okay, but you might find some shots are underexposed because you're putting everything into that one clip adjustment onto all of your clips. So some of them might not look good. So you need to go through and check all of them. So I've noticed a couple of these clips, certainly at the start, are underexposed. So I'm gonna go back to this first clip here. And this one here, I want to actually increase the brightness. So by clicking on the pencil icon, go back to that color, I'm gonna bring the adjustments window back up. I'm just going to increase that brightness. And then if you look now, the contrast is really high. So I'm going to bring that contrast down a touch as well. So we can actually see that tower and then just bump that saturation a little bit as well. So that's okay for this video today. So then I go back off that and that's saved automatically. So now all we need to do is add some music. So I'm just going to open Safari. I'm going to go into sound stripe. I'm just going to pick a song to actually go along with this. So it's great using multitask on here. I can just push that window, still keep a Lumen Fusion on, and then I can just go on here and just search for a song. So I'm just gonna select my playlist, and then I'm just gonna pick a song which I've used before, just for the uh, purpose of this video. So this one's okay. I'm gonna just click license on this, put my name in, and then actually go to download. This will then download it onto the iPad, but because I've got it multitasked, I can just drag and drop this straight onto LumiFusion, which is so convenient. So click download on that, and you'll see now that has downloaded. So for this, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna bring the multitask window so it's like half and half. I'm gonna select my download that song and then just drag it straight on. And you can see now here, there's a new icon called imported, top left corner, and that's my music track. So I'm gonna click that. And then as we did before, just drag that onto the timeline. And then I want that now to be at the start of all the clips. So there you go. So now I've got loads of video clips all cut up as I wanted with music as well. So this now is starting to look really good and we're almost finished. So that track I've put on there, that music track, we've got it faded out if you remember at the end. I also want that music to fade out as well. So by going to the end clip here, I'm just gonna drag the music out a little bit more than the video clip, click transition. And then as we did before, click the transition and then just drag that out. So it's a little bit more. So now when we do it, we're gonna get that music to fade out and then the video fades out as well. So that's really nicely done. We don't want anything abrupt here at all. So all I have to do now is export it by clicking the button in the bottom right hand corner and then click movie. This will allow us to export this and then click photos. So don't click any of the others, photo is gonna get you the best quality. So here what we can do is we can now export this at full 4K resolution. So nothing like the DJI Fly app where you're doing all your hard work and you only get HD. We're gonna select 4K. We also want the video quality, you can go all the way up to 150, but we're just gonna select extreme. And then from here, you just click the top right hand corner and that will then export it. At the moment, it exports it onto your actual device. That will be changing so you can export it direct onto your hard drive. And that's it, you've reached the end of the video. If you've stuck by it this far, then thanks so much for watching. These take a lot of time to actually produce, but go and have a go at this. Honestly, at the moment on iPad and any mobile device, this is simply the best editor you can get. And it's well worth the money. I've had this for a couple of years now. I use this a lot. So DJI Mini 2, DJI Air 2S, if you want to edit that footage on the go, go and have a go at that and let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.